Let's say you're an intermediate guitarist and you wish you could play solos that sound as tasteful and melodic as the ones you hear from the likes of Matthias Azato, John Mayer or Andy Timmons. What do you think you need to do in order to reach a level where you can improvise solos with the same degree of sophistication and tasteful phrasing as those guys? Is it learning a hundred different scales all across the fretboard, practicing for eight hours a day, or is it going into six figures of debt to become a student at a prestigious music school. Well, the good news is that no, you don't have to do any of that if your goal is simply to become a more confident and melodic improviser. My name is Ross Campbell and in this video, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna help you big time in your quest to become a confident melodic lead guitarist. So a common misconception that a lot of intermediates have about becoming a melodic improviser who always lands on the right notes at the right time is that they have to learn and master as many different scales as possible. And speaking from experience, going down the rabbit hole of learning a hundred different exotic guitar scales because some guitar guru on the internet told me it was essential to do so, is something that led to me spinning my wheels and making very little progress as a lead guitarist for several years. I was only able to pull myself out of my intermediate plateau when I realized that what was holding me back in my lead playing was overlooking the importance of the one scale that matters most. What is that one scale? It's the major scale. Thinking that this is a basic scale or a beginner guitar scale is a huge mistake. All of the players I mentioned at the start of the video, I have no doubt in my mind that they too would stress the importance of learning the major scale on a deep level because they use it all the time in their own playing. The major scale is the foundation of all Western music theory and its formula is considered a blueprint for making sense of just about any other scale that you will learn as a musician. For example, the scale formula for the major scale is root two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we look at the formula for say, the harmonic minor scale, root two, flat three, four, five, flat six, seven, the flat three and flat six in that formula are basically saying, take the third and sixth notes from the major scale and flatten them, which on one string means dropping them down one fret. If you've ever heard musicians talk about chord progressions and say things like, let's play a two, five, one in C major, the numbers two, five, and one refer to the chords built from the second, fifth, and first notes of the major scale which in that example would be D minor seven, G dominant seven, and C major seven. Also, if you've ever tried learning the modes of the major scale and had a real hard time following any lessons on the topic, well, it's likely that you simply do not understand the major scale well enough. I was the same for the longest time. I tried learning Dorian, Mixolydian, Lydian, you know, well before I was ready to make sense of modes. And that was because I did not understand the parent scale from which they are derived, that being the major scale. Again, if you think of this scale as something that's basic and only for beginners, you are making a big mistake, one that could cost you years of progress. So please keep listening to what I have to say if you don't want that to happen. Next, I wanna talk about why I think it is that so many guitarists overlook the major scale and its importance. And that's to do with the way that guitar players in particular typically learn scales. So in my beginner and intermediate days, I was often instructed to study scale patterns. I was told to memorize the visual shapes of those patterns for the major scale and practice playing through them up and down the fretboard. Now, that is not a bad thing to work on in your practice. There is absolutely value in doing so, but if you are only doing that and neglecting to learn the theory behind the scale, you will never develop the skills that will allow you to improvise or write melodic, 
pro level guitar solos with the major scale. And if anyone watching this video wants to leave a comment saying, well, I just play with feel, I don't care about scales or theory. This is not the channel for you, bro. So just go somewhere else. Uh, something that I like to remind my students of constantly is the simple fact that a scale is a formula, not just a visual shape to be moved up and down the fretboard. When you understand the formula of the major scale, meaning the way it's constructed, you will be able to look beyond its visual patterns and learn something that is invaluable to know as a lead guitarist that being the triads that are built from the notes of the major scale. I'll explain what I mean in a second, but for now, I want you to listen to this lick that was written using only notes from the major scale. And now let's listen to that same lick again, but this time pay attention to the fretboard diagrams that I'll add on screen. that as I played through that lick, the fretboard diagram displaying all notes of the A major scale had these little three note chord shapes highlighted in green. Those are what you would call triads, three note chord shapes that contain a root, third and fifth. Triads can naturally be found within the notes and patterns of the major scale and they allow you to focus on the notes that really matter in your solos. The chord progression that the lick was played over was in the key of A major and it consists of F sharp minor, E major, A major and D major. Those are all chords naturally built from the notes of the A major scale. So if you can learn how to find the triad shapes for all of those chords all across the fretboard and visualize them within your memorized patterns of the major scale, then you'll be able to stop wandering aimlessly through those scale patterns, hoping to land on notes that sound good. And instead, you'll be able to start targeting the notes of those triads to highlight the chord changes in your solo, just like a pro guitar player. For example, let's look at the triad shapes I'm targeting in that lick over each of the chords in the progression. Over the F sharp minor, I start out with this root position. And then I move through these three different triad shapes for E major. Then I sort of outline this first inversion A major. And then over the D major chord, I play these first and second inversion D major triads. Now that was a very brief explanation and demonstration of the power of triads, but I hope you can see the value in learning them. And to tie this back to the original point of the video, which was that most intermediate players need to stop getting distracted by useless exotic scales and focus on the major scale. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that many intermediates make the mistake of overlooking the major scale and thinking of it as a basic or beginner scale. Hopefully you are now realizing that there is so much more to learn with this scale beyond simply memorizing its visual patterns across the fretboard. Take the time to learn the theory behind it and you'll realize just how much progress is ahead of you as a lead guitarist. With that said, I mentioned at the start that I had a gift for you. So just click the link in the description box beneath the video or in the pinned comment and you will be able to get free lifetime access to my new intermediate soloing course, Melodic Soloing with Triads. This course teaches you how to ditch your stale repetitive licks and start playing solos that ooze melody and feel. And it really is perfect for the type of intermediate guitarist who has been stuck in a soloing rut for years and is just tired of making no progress. It expands on everything I talk about in this video. It's got two and a half hours of video lessons 
complete with tab files, backing tracks, and eBooks for each module. And I probably will charge money for this in the future, so I have no idea why you wouldn't take this opportunity to grab it for free right now. On screen, you'll see just a few of the reviews that this course has received so far. So if you have any doubts about its value, then you can pause the video and read them now. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.